And the first reaction is, you sent out a quiz? <laughs> and my response is, yes. <laughs> and my next response is, shame, shame, everyone knows your name. <laughs> I didn't, I, didn't I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Love. Wow. I got mine. I expect that from my geometry <laughs> student. <laughs> <laughs> my dog ate it. My baby sister spit up on my homework. You know, I've heard it all. Do <laughs> you ever see Far? You know those cartoons called The Far Side? Yep. I'll never forget one that it shows a teacher in the desk and a, and a student comes in with their dog and they're going like this and the dog spits up a wad of paper and, that, and he says, I told you, my dog ate it. Yeah, it was, it was funny when you see it and to explain it, it's not so funny. It's like the dinosaurs who are smoking and it says the real reasons the dinosaurs went extinct. You know, I like the far side, I think it's cute. Anyway. All that to say is, I'm going to give you one more week to do it. One more week. Um, and and it's, it's not that, you know I'm not grading this, I, it's not anything like that. But I felt that we've gone so far, we're halfway through the book of Revelation, believe it or not. Can you believe it? No. We're halfway through. Um, and the last time we took a quiz, we were back in chapters 2 and 3 um, when we talked about the letters to the churches. So I felt it was important to just kind of give a benchmark as to how much have you remembered. So, the quiz has four questions and one challenge. I'm going to list the questions so that you'll know to see it when I resend it again. Or check your emails and see the attachments that's already <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the first question is: Chapter four is the liturgy of creation. Chapter five is the liturgy of redemption. Elaborate on those statements. Okay, what do we mean by that? When we say chapter four is the liturgy of creation. Chapter five is the liturgy of redemption. How do you know that? What's the, what's the clues? Uh, who are the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Ooh. And what Old Testament background are there to these images? Okay, so first of all, identifying who are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You know what I'm talking about? Say yes. Yes, yes. yes good. <laughs> I'm talking about these guys. Black horse, red horse, white horse, pale horse. Okay. What do they represent? Death. Okay. And what is the Old Testament background to this? This didn't appear out of nowhere. What's the Old Testament context for this? Very good. Connie goes to heaven. <laughs> The rest of you, purgatory for a few more minutes. Okay. Who are the 144,000 sealed in Revelation 6, 1 through 8? And how do they differ from the great multitude in Revelation 6, 9 through 14? Okay. So you have to know the difference. There's a difference between the two. All right? Fourth question. What is the significance of trumpets both in the Old and the New Testament? We spent a lot of time talking about the, the meaning of trumpets because there are, not, there are seven trumpet judgments. In fact, we're still in the trumpet judgments. And while we're studying Revelation 11. Remember, because there's this interlude between the sixth and the seventh. So you have to know, well, what is the meaning of trumpets? Why, why pick trumpets? What's, there's got to be a reason. God didn't use flutes. He didn't use drums. He didn't use cymbals. You know? He didn't use pianos. Why trumpets? There's got to be a reason. And when, there, when you ask questions like that, 
especially of the book of Revelation, where are you going to look? The Old Testament. Why? Because the book of Revelation is the culmination pointing to all of <coughs> salvation history. This is the culmination. This is the celebration. This is the, the revealing of what God had <coughs> planned since Adam and Eve. It is the fulfillment of all of those covenants. And it's doing it in a dramatic and visionary symbolic <coughs> form. Okay? So we can't take this too literally. There may be, very well made, God can do, I'll say it again, God can do whatever he wants, can't he? Yes. Can he turn all of the waters on the world to blood? Yes. Can he send hail the size of a hundred pounds on yes. the earth? Yes. Can he plunge the world into darkness for three days? Yes. 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 Can he do all of that? Yes. yes. So can he do it? Yes. yes. The question is... Do we expect that to happen anytime soon? No, no, no. Maybe. Maybe. That's it. Right there, maybe. <coughs> it's not that he can't or won't, but again, to start looking in the newspaper for, oh, when is this going to happen? When's the water going to turn to blood? Oh, when the locusts are coming out? You know, all that. It's like, again, you're missing the point. Because I'll ask this of everyone, because this is recent too. What are the purposes of these plagues? What's the purpose of them? To repent. repent. To repent. And what's the Old Testament reference for that? Exodus. Excellent. Two more people going to heaven. Right? <laughs> you hear that? That's it exactly. When God sent the plagues on Egypt, yes, they were very literal back then. But they were indictments or judgments against the gods of Egypt. And it was for what purpose? To show God's power? To be sure. Over the gods of Egypt. Yes. Yes. And to teach the Egyptians that their gods were useless. He was the god of God. You, you, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was to teach them so that they would do what? Repent. Repent. God was not interested in killing or hurting people for the sake of like punishing them per se. You know what I mean? He, he sent them there to show them, look, you're worshiping grasshoppers, I'll send you a plague of locusts. <laughs> you worship cattle, I'll send a disease to kill them all. You worship frogs, you're going to have more frogs than you know what to do with. <laughs> hmm? You worship the Nile as the life-giving blood of Egypt. Well, I'll just turn it into blood. What do you think of that? You see what I mean? And in doing so, it gets people's attention because it is so dramatic. You, you with me? But dramatic for what reason? For the sake of drama? No, God is not a drama queen. <laughs> he is interested in repentance, though. And if you, and I, I know Hollywood is never a, the go-to to, for, for biblical theology, but one of the more interesting elements of the Ten Commandments, you know, Charlton Heston, is that when they left Egypt, do you remember that his Egyptian mother goes with them? The Jewish. She's not Jewish. She's Egyptian. Yeah, know, she was she Egyptian. Went, with, with the Jews, the Jews, yes. And it's like, was that all right? Say yes. Yes. Because would God <laughs> want all of the Egyptians to follow them too? Yes. 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 Sure. You, you see, so the, the the whole coming out of Egypt wasn't. It was primarily for the Jews, obviously, because they were the people chosen by God to be the light to the world. Right? We've been here before. Yes. But did God want the Egyptians to convert too? Yes. Yes. And later when we get to Joshua, 
when we get to Jericho, remember Jericho? Yes. Remember Rahab the harlot? Yes. When the spies finally get in there, what does she tell them? She says, we have been worried about this day for 40 years. Ever since we heard what your God did to the Egyptians at the Red Sea, all of our men, our warriors, have been, our, their, their strength left them, their hearts sank, because they knew they couldn't follow them. You see what I mean? And her fear of that caused her to do what? Repent. She says, when you take this city, save me and my family. And Rahab, of course, was this great prayerful woman, very theologian-minded, <laughs> and of a great moral care, right? No. Well, who was she? The whore of the city. Hmm? Does God care about that? No, no. no what does he care about? Repentance. The repentance. And what happened to Rahab and her family? They were saved. They were saved, and all of Jericho was destroyed. And what else do we know about Rahab? She's in the genealogy of Jesus. Ah, she became part of the lineage of Jesus. You see what an act of repentance can do? In the line of David, right? Yes. And was she a Jew? No. No, no she was a Canaanite. A pagan. You see that? See why it's important to understand our whole history? Because when we get to the book of Revelation and we hear about trumpets, what should we think? Jericho would be one. Right? Amongst other things. So this is why God is using this imagery to describe these covenantal events to elicit your response. And what's the primary response? Repentance. Repentance. And did we hear this message earlier in the book of Revelation? Yes. yes. Where? And? And what's in chapter 2 and 3? The letters to the churches. Are we part of that? 